before my next guest, I'd like to share this work with you, a personal correspondence from our dear friend Jay Blotcher, a New Yorker who will recount to us a little on what life was like in the 80s and 90s as a gay man grappling with the AIDS crisis that left so many lives in tatters. Jay Blotcher has been a part of the progressive community for almost four decades, most notably an activist work for LGBTQ and HIV people. Blotcher was a member of the founding chapters of ACT UP, a queer nation in New York City in the 80s and 90s, participating in controversial demonstrations that resulted in policy reform and greater civil rights for these oppressed communities. For three decades, Blotcher was co-owner of Public Impact Media Consultants, a publicity firm that promoted advocacy organizations, authors, filmmakers, charities, and radical causes. Blotcher has edited more than 40 books. His nonfiction essays appear in 10 anthologies. I'd like to say hello to everybody participating in Electronic Literature Day. My name is Jay Blotcher, and I'm very privileged to be able to say hello and to share some thoughts. Uh, I have been an activist since probably 1982 in New York City, uh, instrumental in progressive advancements for the LGBTQ community and the AIDS community. I've done that through the groups Queer Nation and ACT UP, both being the founding chapters of groups that became a worldwide movement. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to do that. Um, Let's talk about the intersectional quality or element of activism and words. My career began... In journalism, I went to college for journalism. I came to New York City in 1982, and my objective was to become a writer, a journalist, the writer of a great American novel, and get a lot of awards. It was a very narcissistic and ambitious hope. However, as the AIDS epidemic spread through New York City, I realized that I needed to do more than just write for myself. I needed to write for others. And so I actually began my career in New York writing for free for a newspaper called The New York Native, which disseminated information about LGBTQ issues and HIV AIDS issues at the time. Then I joined in 1987 the landmark organization ACT UP New York, the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power. And what was my role in there? What could I do? I asked my fellow comrades. This was an amazing movement of great energy and great vision. But where did I fit in? And they said, well, what do you do? I said, I'm a journalist. They said, well, you should join our media committee because that group reaches out to journalists to urge them to write about this epidemic that everybody seems to be ignoring. So I became a member of the media committee and eventually became the head of the media committee in 1989. So what I was doing was writing press releases. I was writing very basic press releases and sending them out to the media to let them know about the various injustices that were going on in the AIDS community and how our government, the United States government, did not have a cohesive plan to address AIDS because AIDS was affecting people who the government had long ago abandoned, people of color, poor people, sex workers, and uh, gay men. So, Here, you know, I had this notion that writing a book or writing short stories or writing articles was the most important thing that I could do for myself as a writer. But here I was as an activist writing press releases, which are the most rudimentary of communications. However, I look back and I realize that these press releases were my 
dispatches from the front that these press releases had the power to change hearts and minds and to change policy and to make social change tangible in the war against AIDS. And after ACT UP, I became the media chair of Queer Nation, a group dedicated to improving the conditions of LGBTQ people in America and around the world. And again, I was utilizing press releases to tell the story, to get the message across. And it was very humbling for me, who had these grandiose notions of becoming a famed and celebrated writer, that I was instead writing press releases and sending them out. And it was only in hindsight, years later, that I realized that this humble, crude, simplistic way of writing actually was getting a lot more accomplished and changing more in this world than any book would have done. So my my press releases were my literature. They were my effort to change the world. And, you know, lo and behold, they did more than, you know, a book or an article could have ever done. We are currently in a, a state in America where education has been beaten down. It has been eroded for so many years thanks to short-sighted legislators and uh, people privatizing education and diminishing education And that, of course, has led us to four years of Donald Trump. As I speak today, we are still awaiting the completion of the ballot counts in America in hopes that Joseph Biden will become our new president and that we will be able to restore the dignity and the effectiveness of education in America. Because an educated America is an America that would not fall for the lies of Donald Trump. We have to get back to critical thinking. And while uh, I uh, do not do publicity anymore, and I have, I've been doing uh, book editing, and I have uh, since – I've been doing this on and off since 1991, but I have – resumed book editing in earnest since 2017, and I've had the privilege of editing books that have dealt with social change and social advancements and controversies and, you know, works that examine the road towards healing the social ills in America. Editing, for me, is a form of activism as well, I try to choose my clients carefully. I do not obviously select a book from uh, to edit from a, a right winger or from somebody who is going to disseminate information that only helps the conservative status quo. So my editing is an extension of my activism and uh, – In times like this, where education is being chipped away at, writing a book, writing an article, writing a manifesto can be a revolutionary act. And I urge you all to continue to be revolutionary, to write, write, write. Thank you so much for giving me the chance to share these words. Bye.